Okay, so kind of broad topic, and then we're going to narrow it down into a little bit more specific. The broad topic is this uh, C-sharp collection. And so we're going to talk about uh, collections uh, as a whole and kind of what are the different options, because we haven't really broadly talked about this. And then we're going to talk more specifically about one kind of collection, which is a C-sharp dictionary. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're going to be building and writing software and that software is going to work with data. Ultimately, uh, where we're headed next is, um, that data is going to be persisting in a database right now. Our data doesn't really get saved anywhere, uh, long-term storage. Um, but that's kind of where we're heading. Uh, we're going to be saving data in the database but then what you do is you take the data out of the database you take the information out of the database and you have to be able to store it in your app somewhere obviously with c sharp and so you have information and that information will be persisted in the database you're going to take that out and we're going to learn how to do that and then you have to save it in some sort of container in c sharp and what that container can broadly be defined at is is as a collection Right, a collection is just some storage unit uh, that you can store information in. And broadly speaking, in C Sharp, you have different collections. Again, different containers that you can store data in. And these are the common ones that I kind of have outlined for you on the screen. If you can see my screen share, um, we've hit on two of these already. We hit on the first two, uh, be it arrays and lists. And if you remember um, a little bit about arrays, you can kind of see here, arrays are fixed in size. And so you can have an array of 100 elements, but if you want to add 101st element, right, that's where the weakness of an array is. Like making an array grow or shrink, that's not really great. And so that's where lists come into play, right? Lists are dynamically resizable um, and you know basically provide that benefit over arrays and so you know when you're looking at this chart you know this is just something I kind of want to keep in my back pocket if I'm in your shoes you know I would save this image I post it in discord put this image in your repository um, because ultimately what you're gonna be doing you're gonna be pulling data out of a database and you're gonna have to decide what kind of storage container do I put it in Okay, and right now we've really covered these two options, arrays versus lists, um, but we're gonna be introducing a few new ones and then diving a little bit deeper into, uh, like I said, dictionaries, which is one um, kind of collection. Um, and then we have what are known as sets. Now in C Sharp, it's called a hash set. Um, the big thing about a, a hash set in C Sharp is it's supposed to store entities once and so you can kind of see here the first bullet about a hash set a hash set is supposed to store unique elements of the same type so you really don't want the same thing stored twice it's kind of the idea behind a hash set um, so that's the big benefit of a, of a hash set a dictionary you can kind of see here a dictionary has some downfalls it's more memory intensive than arrays list or sets but it's very fast when looking up information, right? So in a dictionary, and we'll get into a dictionary, but a dictionary is just like a real world dictionary. Uh, you basically have a word that you're looking up, you have something that you're looking up and you know, you know, you can get to it really fast because you understand the alphabet and alphabetical order, right? So a dictionary has what are called key and value pairs and the strength of a dictionary is when you know the key you can look up information really fast, right? So I'm imagining you've got a lot of data and you wanna retrieve the data fast. You want your searches to be fast. You might consider a dictionary. Um, then you have what are called queues and stacks. And um, again, it all depends on the data and how you're accessing the data. Um, I think of a stack, of, like a stack of papers. Um, and so, you think of a stack of papers, like if you add a paper to the top and then you were gonna remove a paper, it would be the last in 
and then the first one out. So you can kind of see here, uh, a stack is exactly, think of a stack of papers. You access the elements, not by their keys, not by their, you know, not by their position in the array, right? So when you put data into an array, you can say, okay, well, give me the subscript number five. And you can read in any order that you want. You can say, give me the last element, give me the first element, give me the middle element. You know, with an array, you can look up elements just by their index, okay? With a queue or a stack, you know, you put a piece of information in and you pull a piece of information out. So you can't really access it wherever you want. It's just access one at a time. You put something in, you put something in, you put something in. When you perform a read operation, you're gonna read in a stack the first one out would be the last one that was in, right? So again, last in, first out. So think of a stack of papers. A queue and a stack are basically very similar, but um, a queue, I think more of a, uh, like a gas station, when you're loading the sodas in a gas station, right? The, the first one in from the back is the first one out from the customer side, right? So again, these, these are all collections and what collection you use will be based on the needs of the data. Like there's no one answer that this is the only collection. It just depends on, you know, what is the data? How is the data gonna be accessed? Um, and and depending on the needs of the data, you might use one thing over another. Now again, the benefit of the dictionary, right? So we're getting into a dictionary, uh, is that it performs fast reads, okay? Now it says it's more memory intensive than arrays, lists, or sets. So you can think of the other operations when you're adding things to a dictionary, when you're updating things in a dictionary, deleting, removing things in a dictionary that actually might cause your app to run slower than if you were to put something in a list or into a hash set, okay? But if, you're, if you think, you know, hey, I can load all this data into a dictionary once and then look up information very fast by a key, you know, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna provide a lookup by the key, um, then, then you might consider a dictionary. So basically fast lookups, that's the benefit of a fast dictionary. So that's, that's some theory around collections and now we're gonna get into some of the code. How do you actually code a dictionary? Is, it, uh, is a dictionary like closer to like the ones we've been usually doing where we are able to like? I don't know that we've used a dictionary. No, 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 we've no, used like, lists, right? I mean like the other ones, like lists and arrays. Uh, is it like closer to that? Or well, I'm gonna show you the differences, right? We're gonna get into the diff differences here. Um. So again, when I think of a C-sharp dictionary, like I wouldn't let this intimidate you, I would think of a real world dictionary. Like that's the easiest way to understand what a dictionary is. What, what do you have in a real world dictionary? Well, you have a word that you're looking up, right? That word is referred to as the key in C-sharp. We're just gonna call that thing that you're looking up, that's your key, right? You're looking up a word, that's your key. You go to the word in the dictionary and you get the definition. Well, that definition, the data that's stored at that key is the value. So dictionaries have keys and values. If I can kind of zoom in here. Dictionaries have keys and values. Uh, the key is the thing that you're looking up. The value is the data that's stored for the key, right? So you've got, when you have a dictionary, you have both a key and you have a value, and yes? Can you have multiple keys per product, per like item? Uh, you want it like a customer ID and an order ID. Okay. So if you search customer ID, it gives you all Probably. The so customers would be one and orders would be another. So I'd have two different dictionaries. Oh. Yep. Uh, yes. Are they similar to enumerations? How are they similar to enumerations? Well, enumerations typically are, you're talking about looping over things, 
right? When something is enumerable, it means you can loop over it. And so dictionaries implement I enumerable, and so you can loop over them, and we will loop over them. Um, so enumeration. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I enumerable versus enums. E -enums. enums. Okay. I, I think I misinterpreted your question. Um, enums, I think of enums as almost like you're creating your own types. And so, like, we had an enum, I think, in one of the labs of color. And we created a color data type, essentially. Color C1. Um, and so, an enum, I think of it as its own, you're creating a type versus a dictionary is just a storage unit to store data. Sorry, I kind of took that down the wrong rabbit hole there, but hopefully that clarifies that. Um, okay, so as I start to type out a dictionary, we just covered uh, generics, and you can see that in a dictionary, it kind of a dictionary will take these angle brackets and it allows you to pass in two types um, for your, and these are generic types, right? We just covered generics today and you kind of saw that that makes your classes and your methods a little bit more flexible. So if, I, if I'm looking at this IntelliSense, you notice it's expecting two types T, a type for the key, and a type for the value. And so these are data types. We're going to pass one data type for the key and another data type for the value. So I'm going to store my keys as strings, and the value I'm going to store as integers. Okay, so my keys are going to be strings, my values are going to be integers. And I'm just going to say employee ages equals new dictionary of string in it. Okay, so keep in mind, a key is nothing but, you know, you're going to look up something based on the key. Just like a real world dictionary, you're going to look up the word, that's the key. Um, and because we're familiar with lists and we know that we can add things to a list with the add method, um, you can see it's actually pretty similar here. I'm going to say employee ages dot. Here's an add method. Again, very similar to a list. Now, notice when I call the add method, look at the data types that it expects. It expects a key, which is a string, and an int, which is the value. Okay? So, uh, Connor, you're my first employee. And Connor's age is, just make something up, I don't care. Does, if you wanna, we're gonna pretend that Connor is 25. I don't know how old. Right? Ben, you're my second employee, and your age is? It's 21. And so we're gonna add three employees to our dictionary. We'll make up a fake Travis. 52. Travis is 52. Okay, so we have three employees added to our dictionary. Again, what this is going to allow us to do is look up employees based on the key very quickly. Um, and so I could do something like this. Int uh, emp age equals uh, employee ages so this is how you perform a lookup. Now, let's let's kind of put some comments in here. We're going to declare and initialize the dictionary. Um, so we're going to declare and initialize the dictionary. We're going to add three um, items to the dictionary. And then we are going to perform a read operation. Read an employee by its key. Now, this is different. 
Check this out. You guys have not seen this, I don't think, at this point. Maybe I'm forgetting something. Normally when you have these brackets, you use uh, an array subscript like a number, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? You don't put a string in there typically. Okay, this is actually called an indexer. Okay, it allows you to look up elements in a dictionary by whatever their key is. In this case, our key is strings. Okay, so I'm able to, it's, again, it's, it's called an indexer and it looks very similar to an array, but instead of just being a number, zero, one, two, three, um, we can put in the key here. Of course, this should return 25, and if I do a council right line, and age, I would expect that to just spit out 25. So we put data into our dictionary and we can pull data out. And that's great, but there's more that we can do obviously. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper, yep. So what if we have, what if we were to have multiple employees by the name of Connor and her name is Emily? Yeah, so that's the unique thing about this is if you try and add two of the same keys, then that's not going to work. Um, and if I kind of run that, I would not expect that to work. And you're going to see unhandled exception. Um, an item with the same key has already been added. Um, and so for that reason, <coughs> well, the name would not be a good indexer. Uh, uh, the name would not be the good key, right? You might use something a little bit more unique like employee ID, you know. So you might use employee ID, uh, as as your indexer yeah that's a good question um so and and that's kind of something that i needed to point out anyways is that you cannot do this okay you cannot have a dictionary with two of the same keys i mean imagine going to the, the dictionary and you're trying to look up a word and you have two totally different you know definitions of the same word it's like well which one is it kind of thing and I realize a word can have multiple meanings, but that's a whole nother, I guess, ball of wax. So we can't do that. Um, okay. Now, just something else, you know, I, I wanted to point out, and I don't know that I have pointed this out yet. Um, if you have a type like dictionary, now this is something that's built into C Sharp. Um, you can actually hold down control and notice when I have my mouse over, the dictionary it becomes a little finger and you can click on it and it opens up another window here now this is not code that you can edit this is the dictionary type this is the dictionary collection um, that's provided for you in other words if you wanted to see kind of how this was coded um, you're able to do so whether it's a dictionary or a list or whatever um, you can you can kind of do some digging and and see what's going on behind a dictionary we actually have some arrays being you know created which is interesting um back to this um if you want to look up a single uh dictionary item you provide the key but oftentimes you want to do more than just uh, a single you might want to loop right so i'm going to do a for each loop for each tab tab and um we've got we can loop through both the keys and the values okay so if i'm going to loop through the keys i'm going to say string key in employee ages dot keys right so this allows us access to just the keys and if I were to do a council right line key okay of course I'm gonna expect to see the strings Connor Ben and Travis easy enough you can also loop through the values so let's loop through for each int ages in employee ages dot values and of course if I for each over those and 
and I say ages, we're going to get the, the ages looping through um, separately in a separate for loop. Um, you also see loops written like this. So I'm going to do a third loop for each. And there is a type key value pair of string and int. We'll call it item in employee ages. This allows us to get access to both the key and the value in one loop, right? So I can do something like council dot right line employee name is we would say item dot key and their age is item dot value. So this is one loop. This is one loop that you can loop through. And again, you're looping through each key value pair inside of your employee ages dictionary. And if I comment out these other loops and just run this one, you see employee name is Connor, 25, Ben is 21. Travis is 52. Um, so those are three different ways to um, to loop through your dictionaries. Um, it's also worth noting that if if you kind of forget this key value pair because that's kind of a weird syntax there, um, there is the shortcut if you will in C sharp where you could just store your data in var. And um, var is kind of a unique trick. I haven't really hit it very hard. Um, var just kind of figures out, it's called dynamic typing. Var just kind of figures out what type is needed. And in this case, var would resolve into this key value pair. But if you don't know what data type you need, because you kind of forget the syntax, which is it's kind of a weird syntax. Um, you can just do var, and this, this would work just as well. And you see that still works. So var is kind of like, I kind of forget the type that I need, so just store it in var, and it will resolve at runtime to, right, to the right data type. Oh, so how, how exactly would you like go about targeting, like let's say, a specific part like of the of the dictionary like just like with the well that was the first thing that I showed the first thing that I showed was like hey I want to get Travis's age right Travis is the key so I would say int Travis age equals employee ages sub Travis this is that kind of idea called an indexer that you can look up an employee by their key not just some array subscript Yes, sir. You might have already mentioned this, but in in the event of like, let's say you want to search for some reason you're searching your employee by their age. What is the benefit of doing it through the dictionary as opposed to searching through like a array? So, uh, um, faster lookups. And so, if you that's that's kind of going back to this part here. Um, is that you kind of get faster data retrieval out of a dictionary than you would out of a list. So like coding wise, the search is probably the same except instead of looking at like the specific location in the list, it's like dot keys. And or in this case, no, I want, I want to take you back. Right. I want to take you back to the syntax of how to look up a single, a single, everyone kind of zone in for me here. Cause I got this question two more times. How do you look up a single thing out of a, without looping, Without looping, how do you look up a single element out of a dictionary is you provide the key. Again, like you're looking up a word in the dictionary. Like right? you're gonna go, you're gonna give it the key or the word that you're looking up. Um, so to look up 
you know, Travis, you're going to get the value that's stored at Travis, which is in this case 52. Okay. Yes. Can you still look up by subscript? So if I were to do this, um, you're asking me questions I haven't tried. Um, does not appear to be the case. Oh, so if, if you so you have to do it by the the string. Does it have to be something that you already entered a value in, maybe like twenty if you try twenty five or twenty one or fifty two? No, that's on the value. So you can't. You, yeah, if I just said twenty five, no go either. It has to be. You have to provide the key. Now, a key can be an int. I'm not saying a key can't be an int. Right? Because we define that first. Right? So if I did a dictionary of int, int, that's a whole different structure of my dictionary, and I could do that then, right? So, so like, let me just kind of do a, let me just do that real quick. If I had another dictionary, int, int, we'll just call this int dictionary. say int dictionary dot add I'm gonna say and we'll, uh, the key is a one and I don't know 100 just making making it up whatever council right line I'm gonna say int dictionary sub one well now that worked because my key is an int and I would expect this to print out the value um, that doesn't work of 100 and there there's my value of 100 I wonder how it didn't work if you put it like with a text box which was the basis would you just put in let's say Travis in the text box you can let the user type in the name that they're searching for and then you would just substitute employee <coughs> ages sub whatever they typed in that text box and put that into a variable Okay, a um, couple more things, right? I'm just going to go back to my original dictionary here of string int, right? So employee ages and not worrying about this. In fact, I'm just going to delete that and clean this up. Kind of clean this all up. Adding three items to the dictionary. I kind of looped over um, everything. Um, there's also a try parse um, so let's let's factor this right so we could say if employee ages um, try get value so this is kind of your try parse so Connor uh, int age so we're going to try to get the value of Connor and comma out age. If it works, council right line age. So this is kind of a more flexible way of like saying, hey, does this, does this, uh, Now, uh, try get value, try get value. So you look up Connor by his key and it gets the value and puts it into 25 dh. So that's nice, but if you try a key that doesn't exist, Connor 2 doesn't exist, we're going to say else that doesn't exist. All right, so there's kind of a try parse there uh, with dictionaries that you could use. And I think that's everything that I wanted to hit. I guess you could hit an update. Uh, Connor gets older, right? Um, so let's do employee ages sub Connor.
So let's do an update on our dictionary, right? Connor got a year older, goes from 25 to 26. And because, you know, the value is in it, we could just add one to it. And the last thing would be to remove, right? So the last thing we don't, one employee, uh, Travis quit. So I'd say employee ages dot remove Travis. So then if I try and look up Travis, after he's been removed, we get uh, unhandled exception, key not found exception, right? And because you understand try catches and exceptions and how they work, you, you know how to catch that exception, key not found exception. Okay, so those are the basics. Thankfully, there's just a bunch of methods, add, remove, that kind of stuff. Um, but also updating is not too hard. The main thing, just think of a real world dictionary. You want to look up a word, whatever it is, provide that key and you're going to get back a value. Other questions? All right, that should help you with that second lab in chapter 10, part two, where you got to work with the dictionary.